Okay, so coming back to the theorem, what I've proved is given any representation of SU3, you pick a highest weight using this uh, line of irrational slope, and then you know you generate an irreducible sub-representation um, by applying EIJs, which are on the left of this line of irrational slope. Great. So what I want to use this for is to prove the uniqueness of the irreducible subrepresentation with a given highest weight. In other words, we want there to be only one possible subrepresentation with a given highest weight. So here we go, uniqueness. Suppose u and v are irreducible sub-representations, sorry, irre irreducible representations, no sub about it, of SU3 with highest weight lambda. And this is with respect to some choice of uh, line of irrational slope, that's kind of fixed. I want to prove that u is isomorphic to v, so that there's a unique irreducible representation with this highest weight up to isomorphism, and that will that will be as much of the classification theorem as I'm going to prove at the moment. So the idea of the proof is it's a trick. You form the space u direct some v. This is still a representation of SU3. It's no longer irreducible because it's got these two sub-representations, but it is a representation. And uh, if sort of little u in u and little v in v are highest weight vectors, so weight vectors with weight lambda, then u comma v, in other words, this point in, in u direct sum v, is a weight vector, also with weight lambda. So why is this? This is because, you know, being a weight vector with weight lambda means r star c h theta of u equals lambda of theta u and r. Uh, oh, we should give the representations names. I'll call this one r and this one s. So uh, s star c of h theta v equals lambda of theta v for all theta. So if I just apply the direct sum representation, then sort of r direct sum s star c h theta applied to u comma v is just what you get by sticking the h theta in both of these simultaneously. So this is not a tensor product representation. I don't need the product rule here. This is just the direct sum. So I get r star c h theta u comma r star, uh, sorry, s star c h theta v, which is just lambda theta u v. Okay, so this guy, this um, u comma v has weight lambda, and actually lambda is still the biggest weight that I get in my representation. So by our theorem, u comma v generates an irreducible sub-representation. You know, by applying negative um, roots. Okay, so uh, that's the thing I've drawn on in uh, in the diagonal in this picture here. So let's call this sub-representation, I don't know, w inside u direct sum v. So now the claim is that um, the projection maps onto u 
and onto V are morphisms of representations. So I'll leave that as an exercise for you to check, see if you can remember what the definition of a morphism is. Um, and there's this nice fact that um, a morphism of irreducible representations is either an isomorphism or it's zero. How do you prove this? This is this is Schur's lemma. This uh, I think we even proved it earlier on, but let me remind you how you prove it. You take the kernel of the morphism, and that gives you a sub-representation of say W. Well, W is irreducible, so the kernel is either everything or it's not or is zero. If the kernel is everything, then the map is zero. If the kernel is zero, then the map is injective. And the image of the morphism will be a sub-representation of U or V. Um, and again, because U and V are irreducible, that's going to be either everything or zero. If the image is everything, then it's surjective. If the image is zero, then it's zero. So the only possibility is uh, that you have an isomorphism or the zero map. So this tells us then that uh, U is isomorphic to W is isomorphic to V, right? Both of these maps are isomorphisms, so in particular U and V are both isomorphic to W. How do we know they're not zero? Well, because we've got this map, this, this point U comma V, that maps non-trivially to U and non-trivially to V, so the map can't just be zero. Okay, so this, um, this actually completes the proof. So this is basically Scherz lemma. at the end.